Hello everybody. Let's review some material referring to present perfect continuous and phrasal verbs. Let's start with the present perfect continuous. It is used to show that something is started in the past and has continued up until now. Se refiere a un periodo temporal no específico situado entre el pasado y el presente. This is the structure. Has and have, it depends on the subject that is used. Has is used with he, she, and it, and have with I, we, you, and I. Plus the past participle of the to be verb, and plus the present participle, which means an ing verb. This structure in here have to be affirmative, negative, and the questions in present perfect continuous. Some examples. James has been teaching at the university since June. They have been talking for the last hour. What happened here are some time expressions like last hour, for three years, last 30 minutes. It means the action started three minutes, 30 minutes ago, continue now and it's going to finish sometime in future. These expressions lately and recently can be used with this tense. And when we use these ones, these words in here, no time expressions are used. These expressions give the idea a more general meaning. For example, recently I have been feeling really tired. She has been watching too much television lately. Has, have you been exercising lately? General idea. The uh, foreign scenes are used too with this tense. For is used with a um, period of time, for example, an hour, two months, one decade. Some more examples of periods of time in here. And since is used with a point in time, more examples of points of time in here. Examples with foreign scenes. Tara hasn't been feeling well for two weeks. Tara hasn't been visiting us since March. Remember, my friends, always has or have been in the verb with ing. This is a period of time. This is a point in time. Some exercises for you to do applying these things. I suggest you to do it and you can check the answers in here. Now, phrasal verb. What is a phrasal verb? A phrasal verb is a single verb plus a preposition and pueden tener más de un significado. For example, look as a single verb is verb to observar, but with preposition like up, it means consult a reference. So it's look up means consult a reference in a book or in a dictionary. Look for is seek, which means buscar something. And look forward, it's anticipate with pleasure to something. Phrasal verb can be separable or inseparable and they are mainly used in spoken English and informal text. Separable phrasal verbs, it means that the object can be between the verb and the preposition, like in here, you have to call him back, or 
the object can be after the phrasal verb, they are both correct. It is important to remember here that when the object of the phrasal verb is a pronoun, a personal pronoun like this, the verb must be separated. For example, you have to do it over. It never can be. You have to do over it. Because this is a personal pronoun. Separable phrasal verbs are commonly used with intransitive verbs. What is an intransitive verb? It's an action, of course, but there is no object to receive the action. For example, I cried, the horse galloped, the book fell, and the sun set. Actions, but no object to receive it. An example with call as a single verb and call plus of, which means a phrasal verb. Call is llamar, call later, and call of is cancelar. The manager called the meeting off. Inseparable phrasal verbs. Uh, are used with transitive verbs. What is a transitive verb? It's an action, again, that have an object, object to receive the action. For example, I baked some cookies. This is the action, this is the object receiving the action. Move the chair, roll the bicycle, and stitch the quilt. The, as I said, these verbs can be separated. For example, who will look after my house when I'm gone? An example in here with get as a symbol, single verb and get over. And with a phrasal verb, get is recibir. Tom got a letter from his mother, this is the translation, and get over is recuperarse de algo, and Tom got over the flu, Tom se recuperó de la gripe. Here are some exercises for you to do and practice um, the use of phrasal verbs, and you can check the answers in here. And um, that is all the information that I have for you today. I hope it will be of any help for you. And remember, I always here to help. Thanks. Bye for now.